In this problem, we have to determine if the sequence converges or diverges. And if it converges, we have to find the limit. So this will converge. And this is a special sequence. That's how I know it converges. If you let n go to infinity, you'll notice that you'll get something like this. Uh, 1 plus 0, this is really bad, to the infinity. So you end up with 1 to the infinity. So this is an indeterminate form. So to do this, we're going to use logarithms, okay? And here's how it works. We'll start by, I'm going to go ahead and start by writing it again. So a sub n equals, and then I'll put a space here, 1 plus k over n to the n. Then we'll take the log on both sides. So ln, ln. And when you do that, what you can do is you can bring the n down. So you get the natural log of a sub n equal to n times the natural log of 1 plus k over n. And then what you can do is you can rewrite this as ln 1 plus, here's the trick, k over n over, and then you write it as 1 over n. And the reason that you do this is because now if you take the limit, if you think about what's happening here, um, in the numerator, you'll get you'll get ln of 1, right, because k over n approaches 0. In the denominator, you'll get 0, right, because 1 over n approaches 0. So ln of 1 is 0. So you get 0 over 0. So you can actually use L'Hopital's rule, which uh, lets you take the limit. So let's go ahead and take that limit. So the limit, as n goes to infinity, of the natural log of a sub n is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of 1 plus k over n over 1 over n. Okay, and this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, so now we just have to take uh, the derivative of each piece because this has the form 0 over 0. Again, ln 1 over 0 is 0 over 0, so we can use L'Hopital's. So the derivative of ln x is uh, 1 over x. That's from, from before. If you have ln x and you take the derivative, you get 1 over x. So here, it's going to be uh, 1 over 1 plus k over n. That's like your 1 over x times the derivative of the inside. So we're thinking of k over n, and we're taking the derivative. Pretend n is a variable like, like x. It's really k times 1 over n. So it's really k n to the negative 1. And so when you take this derivative, you get negative k n to the negative 2. So you get negative k over n squared. Eventually, you memorize it. You memorize that the der derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. In this case, it'll be negative k over n squared. Again, um, you get tired at some point of doing this, and you end up just memorizing the derivative of 1 over x. So again, it's 1 over whatever is here times the derivative of the inside over. On the bottom, same thing. The derivative of 1 over n is negative 1 over n squared. Right. So uh, you end up memorizing it. All right, so we took the derivative of the top, we took the derivative of the bottom, and this is really nice because some stuff does cancel. This is the limit as n goes to infinity. So the negative 1 over n squared cancels with this one. So we're left with negative k over 1 plus k over n. So, oh, oh, the negatives go away. Whoops, I messed up, right? The negatives cancel. So we're just with k, with, uh, k over 1 plus k over n. So as n approaches infinity, you get k over 1 plus 0. Now we drop the limit sign, so we get k. So we have that the limit of the natural log of a sub n is equal to k. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. So we showed, we showed that the natural log of a sub n approaches k as n approaches infinity. Okay, here's the here's the punchline. So thus, this is the part that a lot of people don't understand. 
e to the natural log of a sub n approaches e to the k as n approaches infinity. And the reason that this is true, and this is the part that I said that a lot of people don't get, don't think about, is because e to the x is continuous. Um, so recall the definition of continuity says if you have the limit as x approaches c of f of x, this is actually equal to f of c. That means you can plug in the number. That's what we're doing here, right? We're plugging this into the e. We're plugging it into the e because e is continuous. Kind of cool. These cancel. So a sub n approaches e to the k. And that's our limit, right? Remember, a sub n is what we started with. a sub n was 1 plus k over n to the n. So this is something that you typically memorize. This is not typically something that you work out. So in general, you memorize this limit. So if you ever see this limit, 1 plus k over n to the n, you just basically memorize it. You just know that it's equal to e to the k. And then, you know, if you ever had to do it for some reason, uh, you would. But most of the time, you're just allowed to do this. You're allowed to use this ability, uh, this, this technique. If you replace k with 1, if k is equal to 1, you get this. This is also worth recognizing um, just for, like, your own benefit in math. Uh, totally worth knowing uh, this. This would just be e, right? So this is oftentimes the definition of e. So both of these are uh, extremely useful in mathematics. And again, it's just good to memorize these. So worth, worth memorizing um, these limits. But I wanted to work it out. Instead of just saying, hey, here's the limit and here's the answer, uh, memorize it. Uh, it's good to see it done at least once in your life. And it really, it's not that bad uh, once, you, once you go through it once. I hope this video has been helpful. That's it.